Hi guys and welcome back to Lark's Workshop. Today we're going to be changing the wheel bearings on the bus. Um, those of you who have seen a previous video of mine will remember that I had to put a second hand bearing on there uh, to get it for MOT because I couldn't order a new one in time. So let's get on change that one and change this side as well. Right, here's what comes in the full kit. So we've got outer bearing, so we've got the bearing and outer race, inner bearing, again two parts, a seal goes on the inside, and a new nut. Need a new nut because it's the type that you you belt in um, with a blunt chisel to lock it in. This is the uh, the older style uh, bearings. The, the later ones got a different locking uh, assembly or type of locking anyway. Okay, that's the bits. So here's the tools we're going to use. We've got rubber hammer, dead well, dead blue mallet, little screwdriver. That one's for getting the um, oh, the little e clip off the speaker drive. Normal hammer. 19 mil ring spanner for the caliper bolts, um, ratchet if you want, a 24 millimeter spanner for the upper ball joint, and 27 that's for the bearing nut. Okay, also sorry, a couple of pin punches and a torque wrench set to 118 foot pounds, that's for the uh, caliper bolts again. Uh, also, I've got, so if I can tilt that up, I've got a little kit here which um, I use for putting in uh, the back bearing with that one. Um, and also, I've got my little Makita tools for whizzing bolts out quickly so we don't have to wait too long. Some rags, some real dirty, dirty ones, and some nice clean ones for cleaning up the caliper, uh, not calipers, cleaning up your discs after. Okay, let's get to it. Also forgot, going to need some grease, some blocks of wood and maybe uh, a little jack, just to hold the top ball joint in place. Right here we are at the wheel, or not the wheel. What I have done is just put a little bottom jack under the arm there and a piece of wood at the top. See that there? just to load up that top ball joint so when we undo that nut it won't um, take the ball joint out of the taper I suppose you could say because otherwise it might spin going in, it's a bit of a pain. Okay, uh, I apologise at the angle we're at but the first things we're going to undo is that one, that one there and the one at the top. That one there. Okay. So this one, or well these two, 19 mil. And they're pretty tight, so I'm going to use my mallet to undo them. Take that one all the way out until so we've got this undone, which is the 24 mil. This may take some time. Okay. 
The only reason we're taking that nut off is to be able to get this bracket off because we've got a hard line to the caliper. Um, if we take this bracket off we can just fold it to one side without uh, disconnecting the pressure side. Be able to take this last bolt out now. Also worth noticing is that focus? That bolt is the top one and that's got a, a shank on it. The bottom one is just a normal threaded one. Okay. off with the bracket as well and then we can set that down to one side don't let it hang on the on the tube next up a little circuit on the speedo I'll pull that back a bit out of the way, get the cap off with the big spider. Just something to know on the other side, in there, where it's been hit on before, you can see, probably see it on there, slightly domed in. On the other side, that had been rubbing in there on the end of the, of the uh, sub axle so I had to tap it I'll, I'll get a little I'll take a picture of it in a minute for you or a little video when you clean the cap check the inside can you see that see now that's been knocked on and bent in that's been rubbing the end of the shaft or the end of the stub axle so I'll, I'll tap that back out and uh, give it a clean up before I put it back on. Right, get the worst of the grease off the end of this. And then we use 27 on there and just undo it. This one's been used a few times you can see. Well I used it last time as well so just undo this one. To retain that one, that's the anti rotation washer. Outer bearing, and then this lot just comes off. That's showing what's left of the seal. Can you see that? It's not very good. Right, to the bench. Something I want to say, should have said before, before we go to the bench, give this a good clean up first, make sure it's all in good condition. The, um, the lip seal actually sits and runs on that face there. Try out your bearings and your lip seal, make sure you've got the right kit before you grease them up and start using them, because you might have to change them. Right, first thing we're going to do is knock out the outer bearing. It's quite hard to see. I'm hoping you can see there's a little on the far bearing. Can you see it? Oh, it's not focusing. There. You see that little notch out? It's a little notch. You need to get the pin punch in there 
there's one on the opposite side and just tap them out. Right, all I'm going to do is set this up on a couple of blocks of wood and then tap out that front bearing. I need to put it off the bench because um, it won't come out all the way. Right, so you just get it in, find that little notch, start her off. Oh, he's gone off. Perfect. Should be able to see those notches nice and clear, hopefully. Can I get the camera in there? Need a light. See the little notch in there? That's where you've got to get the pin punch in behind. Okay. Next, we knock the back out. Now this is a bit of feel, trial and error. I'm going to get the inner race out first, just to tap it out. But I'll knock the seal out as well. Because we replaced it, I'm not worrying about that. That's the inner bearing. looking for the notches on the inside of here. There's one just there. So we've got to do the same. Reach through with the pin punch and knock that one out too because I just kicked the camera. I do apologise. Right. This is a bit of trial and error and feel for these. Oh I saw it a minute ago. going to give this a quick clean up and then show you what we've done. Right, we are all cleaned up. Oh, sorry about this light, blimey. Right, we're all cleaned up. You see the notches in there? That's the inner. And that's the outer. So we're going to drive or press in the uh, the back inner bearing outer race, which is this brand new one here. So we'll set that on there. And what I've got is the old race, the old outer, and we're going to tap that in using that because it's a nice clean face. We don't want to damage this face with a hammer. But remember, don't knock it too far in because you have to get this one out after. So we we'll start off just tapping this in. Right, we've just gone below the surface there, so that's just right. Now, if you've got a socket, tap it down. If you're really desperate, use a pin punch, which is to be very, very careful of that face. Luckily, I've got a little kit which allows me. To put it on. So I'm going to use this. Right, 
so that's just pulling all the way through centre that one and I'll just use the electric thingy to rattle it in If you're tapping it in, it will be more of a dull thud until it hits the bottom, then it will ring. So there we are. That's in there. Let's do the top one, the outer bearing. I haven't got a tool to do this, so I do have a socket. But again, I'm going to use the other. Same method, use the old outer so I don't damage this face. And that's just below the surface. Still got a little ways to go, not too far. So I'll use socket off of this one, it's just the right size. You have to listen to the difference in tone when it goes to the bottom. There she is. Here it. That's the difference. And there we are. That's the outer races from the front and the back in. Right. Back to the bearing. So I'm just going to pre-grease this before I put it in, and then. Put the seal in a bit more grease. I've took it out the, the tube because it's just a bit easier. So you just want to sort of massage this into the bearing. Just make sure it's in there. And when it gets warm it will spread around anyway. But uh, new bearing you want to look after it don't you? So massage them in. Make sure there's plenty in there. You can see it's starting to fill up in around the rollers. And then that just pops in there. Put a bit of grease in around the back because you want to get some grease to this back seal. Don't put tons in because if you put too much in, when it gets hot and expands, it'll come out and cause it breaks. So just enough. And then we've got the seal. So this one just goes in the back. That uh, flat face will be facing outwards as we look at it. So just put a little bit of grease on just to lubricate that inner face. Ooh, blind me. Slippery stuff. We're just on that one level. Might go in by hand, might need a tap in. This one's going in, oh, going in cockeyed. We need to give it a little tap on that side. Just to get it started. Actually, I could use this. Oh, that went down perfect. I felt that. There, flush. Before we turn it over, we're going to put some grease in behind this bearing in the void just to, well, that's what the void's for. So we just put a bit in there. Don't need tons, just some. 
and then we're going to turn over and grease up the outer bearing the same. Not very exciting. Just get it in there. Put a bit of grease in behind on this side. There she is. Right, so we've already cleared, cleaned up the locking washer and the cap, which I did have to tap out a little bit. So that's all cleaned out. I'll put some grease in that and then we'll move over, put it back on the bus. Right, we're back. So I'm just going to put the disc with the new bearings back on. Sometimes this is a bit fiddly, sometimes it isn't. We shall see. Oh, I like it grew there. The anti-rotation washer goes in that little slot there. And our new nut. Do it up until it starts going tight. Just making sure all the bearings are all bottomed out. And then we back it off until we can just about move that locking washer. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show it to you. The screwdriver. Just if we can slide it. So we just do it back it off a little bit at a time. Nope, it's a bit tight. Ah, just saw it move then, so you should be able to slide it now. Maybe a bit more. See, so just about move it, or oh, it's a little bit loose apparently. Just about move it a little bit. See that? So that should be perfect. Lovely. So now we just need to lock it in place. There's a little notch on the end there, so I'm going to just give it a tap, start it off, and then strike it in. There we go, so that's not going to come out now. So I've just given the um, disc clean off with some um, brake cleaner, just to make sure there's no grease on there. I've got clean gloves on. So I'm going to put the caliper back on. And we've got to slip that bracket back up onto that. Right, let's get this caliper on. fiddly but we're there. Right, 
now we need to get this nut back on holding the um, top ball joint and as you saw previously I can't get a socket on it so this will take some time again going to torque up the caliper bolts. So that's 118 pound foot. One of the last jobs, put the cap on, a bit of grease in there, can't see it, sorry, there, so I've put a splodge of grease in there, got to line up the uh, speedo cable, so I'll shove that through a little bit, we'll line that one up, so it comes out, there she is, take two back, give it a tap on with my mallet. Now that's on there, need to put the little clip on there, which I can't find. So apart from that, what you need to do is give the foot brake a bit of a pump, make sure the caliper is all pumped up and engaged, and there we are done. Wheel bearings changed. Okay guys, that's it for today. I hope this was of some use to you when you want to change your wheel bearings, and don't forget don't lose the circlip for the speedo cable. Alright, so if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe for more videos. Cheers then! Hey, found it!